everyone, it's Christina and Maria. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about makeup brands that I don't support. Cruelty free edition because I only support cruelty free brands. So I'm going to be talking about cruelty free brands. And if you like these brands and they're your stands, then that's cool. Just don't go after me that I don't support these brands for my reasons. And don't tell other people that they should just get over it because we don't have right to tell people getting over things especially when they're controversy and racist stuff like that's a big no-no we have every right to support something and not and i know people will say oh it's their money and their choice but exactly it's my money and my choice if i don't want to support a brand then i have every right not to put my money in that specific brand and i got green on my first brand I'm going to talk about is Lion Crime. Lion Crime is one of those brands I don't support. Why is because ever since 2014 their security breach happened. A lot of people, their accounts, their big accounts got hacked and people were a lot, lost a lot of money in their accounts, especially money they don't even have. To me it's a nightmare. I don't want to I don't want to support a brand that they had a security breach issue and then the company, especially the owner of the company, that's the face of the comp of the brand, pretty much went very unprofessionally how they took care of the whole situation having a makeup company brand that everyone put their money in and then they have this situation and then the owner pretty much just took it the whole serious this whole situation like an asshole pretty much was unacceptable to me plus their ingredients sometimes is not that accurate like it's a vegan and cruelty free brand but sometimes their ingredients in their products is not that accurate as they are and that's a bit um concerning because you know you, you're spending your money on something and putting this on your face and you want to be sure that you're putting things that are accurate and safe and then people are bringing up the fact that she dressed like hitler for halloween but let's be real if you look at the photo really closely and observe it she wasn't really wearing a hitler costume or a nazi she just had a dumb haircut and just drew the square looking mustache and just had random military pins that was not german nazi related was it dumb yes she has even a video that she talks about it so i might leave in the description box below but other than that it's blank is one of those brands i don't want to support even though um back in may or june they announced that a bigger company is buying the brand and taking over and the owner is stepping down it's kind of like a good idea because people that have people like me and others that have a reason not to support the brand now i can check the brand out but also will lion crane be the same because you know lion crane has the unicorn lipstick and the venus pal to me the venus pals personally is like one of the products i always eye on of light crane because venus pals to me they're like neutrals but very unique neutrals which to me is very hard to do because a lot of brands do neutral palettes and they're so boring but Lion Crane seems to like do it with a, a with a T but you know I just never gone near that brand and then also too Ulta is selling their items online and in stores which to me is a good idea since people are concerned about supporting Lion Crime but they're kind of curious about more about the brand you can go to your nearest Ulta or just purchase it online which is a good thing unfortunately I don't have an Ulta so I cannot be one of those people that tries and be like hmm maybe I'll purchase my money or not the next one is Jeffree Star. Okay, I am pretty much in like borderline. I want to support Jeffree Star and the other borderline, I don't. The reason I never wanted to support Jeffree Star is because of his racist past, which was like 13 years ago. And even though he apologized a million of times already, I feel like it's not my place to forgive him or to others to forgive him because that's not my place at all. But I think people, when they go out doing racist slur, regardless if you're saying that the person at that race or not, is unacceptable in my opinion. But even though he apologized and he changed as a person, I'm at a point that I do would like to support his brand in the future. But at the same time, I kind of don't want to because I feel like it's a very controversial thing. And I do think he is generally apologized and changing as a person, but he has a habit not it's keeping his head out of drama which is a bit of concerning especially when you're a face of the brand speaking of jeffree star the next brand is too faced too faced cosmetics um by the way i have purchased things of too faced i had their better than sex mascara i had their melted berry lipstick which unfortunately i haven't finished yet like a few moments later see like this is the melted berry and i still have it it's been years i have it already and it's still like a lot there's like no way for me to finish this damn thing like I would never purchase something like this again because this is something that out of all my lipsticks I have this is gonna be still available because it's hard like tell me how to finish this sooner besides wasting the product 
But um, before I get to my rain reason, I don't want to support Too Faced. I cannot, t I cannot take this brand seriously. Like every theme they do, whether it's the sweet, the the peachy collection palettes or anything that's mediocre-ish, that I just can't take this brand seriously anymore. Back in the day, they got my attention, but let's just reminisce every dumb limited edition eyeshadow palette they have done recently. You see what I mean. I just can't take them seriously. And plus, the owner, Jared, he's like in his 50s, and there was this controversial thing. Him and Jeffree Star were like attack each other on social media, which was pretty like, what are you doing? And then the whole Nikki tutorial situation that he didn't pay Nikki a lot of money, that's that's pretty messed up. Like, you're, you're paying someone to be collabing with you, and you're not paying them that well. That, Too Faced, you're a big, you're a big brand. And this is a big issue I just don't want to get to Too Faced. Whether it is I can't take their brand seriously with every product they let out could look mediocre and childish in my opinion. Is their parent company, Estee Lauder. The owner of Estee Lauder back in 2016 gave one point million dollars to an anti-Muslim campaign. And I cannot support that. Even though Estee Lauder is a parent company and it's not cruelty free, but their brand, the brand that they they do own our cruelty free. I just don't feel comfortable to continue whatever brands that are cruelty free part of Estee Lauder. The next brand I'm gonna go, this one, I don't know. I'm just saying my Jeffree Star, I'm like pretty much in between borderline. I don't wanna support this brand and I do wanna support this brand. It's Desiem, known as The Ordinary. I love the fact that they're very affordable. People know them as for their primers and their, and their skincare line, that they're very budget friendly and Pretty much the ingredients in their skincare are pretty much kind of like drunk elephant. And drunk elephant's like ridiculously expensive, but it's like pretty much a pretty much good dupe and it's pretty much budget friendly. And I've been eyeing on their products for years. But here's the little thing is my issue. It's just the owner, the CEO. He just seems kind of cuckoo. Like, I don't know. Like, there's nothing wrong about him. Like, he's not a bad person. He's not racist or anything like that. It just... He just seems very cuckoo, and I'm not comfortable when the face, the owner of a brand, is taking over the social media. Like, it's it's fine, in my opinion. Like, it's fine, but he's the only one doing it, so sometimes I'm just like, is this his personal account, or this is the Desiem, the Ordinary's Instagram I'm following, because I don't know anymore. And it's a bit, I don't know, it breaks my heart because I really want to support this brand because they're budget-friendly, they're cruelty-free, and skincare, it is very important, and I really want to support this brand, but the CEO, something about him, I just, I, well, he's like the former ex-CEO, I think. The ex-founder, basically. I just don't know if I could really support this brand personally. <laughs> I don't know, but if it was like available maybe in drugstores like Walgreens or any of CVS maybe, or Sephora, even though they're a bit budget friendly to be in Sephora, maybe I could check them out myself, but at the same time, I just don't know if I really want to put my money in when the CEO is kind of crazy nuts, so. The next one is pretty much Kylie Cosmetics. I don't want to talk about Kylie Cosmetics that much, it's just, I'm just not the fan of the Jenners and the Kardashians and what they bring to the world and what people you know what I I don't know I just don't know what to say much about them let's just say mediocre prices with mediocre performances in their products like no if you're gonna buy Kylie cosmetics you might as well just buy ColourPop they're pretty much made the same um, pretty much the same factory so it's pretty much just you're just spending a lot of money on Kylie because her name and I don't see her someone, especially all her sisters, someone to idolize. Why is there a plane flying by? She's just someone I just don't want to support. I don't idolize her and I, and I cringe when young women or teenage girls look up to her because it's everything about her and her Kardashian, someone you just don't want to look up to and admire. Like, like yeah, they're pleasing to look at social media wise, but as human beings, I just don't want to support any of them, and especially for the mediocre, ridiculous, how expensive they are, and how how expensive they are, and how ridiculously 
crappy performance they do. Like, I don't want to support brands like that. But I believe they're coming to, her brand's coming to Ulta now, so that's kind of good too, because you don't have to spend that much with their shipping. At least you go there, swatch it yourself, and you could make, and you could decide whether you want to support her brand or not. The next one is KKW Beauty. Just like Kylie Jenner, I don't support Kim K. Even though I follow her on Instagram, but just not her breakup brand. Let's be real. Like, same thing like Kylie. Mediocre, ridiculously high price of makeup brands, but mediocre performances. Plus, she doesn't have a lot of products, so spending a lot of money on a makeup product doesn't have a lot of products and perform really mediocrely is is a big no-no for me. I'm sorry, I can't. And then Kim K, especially her husband, is very questionable. That I just... I don't want to put my two cents in them. The next one is, is Smashbox. Smashbox I have no issues with. I love Smashbox as a brand. I had their lip glare, were like one of those high-end high lip glosses that I tried, but and especially their lip lacquers. They were like really expensive. I spent like 20, 24 dollars on those. like my first high-end. And my only issues with Smashbox is their parent company because their parent company is Estee Lauder. If Estee Lauder was not their parent company, then yes, I will go back and support Smashbox. Because to me, Smashbox, I have no issues with. It's just their parent company. And since their parent company is this person, their C the CEO of, this of Estee Lauder, you know, gave millions of dollars to an anti-Muslim ad. That makes me very uncomfortable. As someone as me, I'm a woman of color, I'm a Latina, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm Nicaraguensan, I'm considered second class citizen because I live in Puerto, Puerto Rico. So it makes me uncomfortable. Like we already have, a sh we already live in a shitty situation now, like than ever. So for someone being racist or doing anti-something, it's a big no for me. So I love Smashbox. I got nothing against Smashbox, but your parent company is is a deal breaker. I'm sorry. Next one is Morphe. I don't want to say much about Morphe because number one, I don't know if they're cruelty free. It's like people claim they are. People say they aren't. People say they're kind of they are cruelty free. But it's like in a gray area, and if you're in a gray area, I don't want to touch you. And same thing, I just don't like the whole Jaclyn Hill Morphe drama, and then you know. Um, the codes that people put their infinity codes every pretty much every big bitty euro seem like they always have an infinity in infinity codes the word I can't even talk straight right now <laughs> Infinity codes like it just makes me very uncomfortable and I don't feel like Morphe's one of those brands I want to trust and especially since I remember back in the day Stephanie Nicole talked about Morphe as a brand and pretty much spoke the truth about Morphe and they didn't like that and they pretty much I'm sorry if a brand is attacking an influencer especially going to their job it's a red flag. I'm sorry. I just feel like Morphe is kind of shady in my opinion. And there's something, a brand that I just don't want to touch nothing from. Next one is Tarte Cosmetics. Same as Too Faced, I cannot take this brand seriously. They keep doing a lot of boring ass same collection. It's ridiculous. The only reason I got interested in Tarte Cosmetics is because of their tape shape concealer. Every freaking beauty guru and YouTuber that, in, that does makeup raves about them. But here's the thing that gets on my nerves besides their mediocre, stupid, boring ass eyeshadow palette is their shade range. They did their, finally their heart shape foundation. They did like two, one's like a matte and one's like for like a dewy whatever. And the shade range was just mediocre, ridiculous. Like I was like, what are you guys are doing? What is this? There's, I don't know which one is Pop Trigger, Pop Sugar that in an interview they claim that they made the shade range like this because people's skin complexion, skin tones change during the winter and summer, which is like the most stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. I don't know, there's people out there that claim that their their skin tone turns one way and another, but it's like you either pale, you know, you're your light complexion and then you get a little darker in the summer. But not, I'm gonna be Casper the fucking ghost in the winter, and I'm gonna be freaking tan like freaking Kim Kardashian in the summer. Really, Tart? And I don't know, they're not, I just can't take their brand seriously either because they haven't fixed the Shane Rage, and they just haven't even thought of decent, awesome, and interesting eyeshadow palettes. They're all boring. Like, the only thing that got me interesting was when that stupid April Fool's thing they did that pretty much they just played themselves. Let's see. Everyone was looking for the Icy Bitch palette, but you guys didn't do it. It was a freaking April Fool's joke, and everyone was making fun of you. Congratulations. You played yourself. Guess what? Other brands like... 
Face Candy and other indie brands are doing their own versions and you guys missed out that opportunity because I was considering getting that, that Icy Bitch palette. I was like, wow, greens and blues. This is something outside of Tarte boring as box. The next one is Beauty Blender and this makes me really sad because this is a Latina made brand. You know, everyone loves the Beauty Blender. It's so innovating whatsoever, but their shade range. What is that? Their shade range is stupid. What is that? It's like light shades and then they have like olive medium shades and then like five dark shades. But out of those five dark shades, there's like two or three orange shades. Like I didn't know Donald Trump was a, 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 a foundation color. What? Like that disappoint me this is a latina made brand by the way so as latina or someone a woman of color you would think like okay they understand people of color are minority we don't get represented enough and you would think they understand we come in all different shade range we are light as paper as snow and dark as the night sky that's how diverse we are in latin america and the caribbean and stuff like this, even in our community, makes me disgusting. I don't think the owner is racist or colorism, but her response saying that she want to focus on more of Latina shades, it's just bullshit, in my opinion. Like, we come in all shade range, light to dark. I don't even think there's even my shade in that in that selection. And it's $40, even more. So people that probably look for their shade range have to pay extra. So it makes me sad that even in our Latin and Latinx culture, we experience racism and colorism. So I get mad people go like saying, oh, white people are racist. You know what? As in a Latina com and the Latinx community, we suffer for colorism. People judge you because you're too dark to be Hispanic, you're Latina. You're too white. I'm Casper, soy Blanca Nieve, by the way, to be Latina. And people think this stereotype aerocentric or what we're supposed to look like and seeing this shade range really makes me sad especially for someone that has a deeper complexion it's even more sad because we still as a latin community we're still misrepresented people just think that we're just we just have mediterranean median toned skin we don't come lighter we don't come darker we don't look like the whitest white or the darkest or you know more like african descent and it makes me sad. So for a brand like this, this is a Latina brand is disappointing. The next one is Huda Beauty. My issue with Huda Beauty is, like I said earlier about other brands, like I said in other Latinx community, colorism does happen even in the Middle East and Asia. It's true. I know people deny it. There's people who deny it a lot and it makes me sad and disgusting. I think we should live in a world that we embrace our skin tone instead of wishing that we're one skin type or another because society has their beauty standards is bullshit okay anyways make it on to the huda beauty because i'm like all over the place my issue with huda beauty is she seems like she has some colorism issues because she doesn't really show a lot of women of deeper skin tones in her instagram unless it's promoting her foundation which i think the ingredients are not really that safe for your skin just to be honest with you i don't even know if her brand is really cruelty free it says it's cruelty free but when you have like actual minks lashes like not fall minks, fox minks, actual minks, that's not cruelty free. And I don't think all her ingredients are really cruelty free. So my issues with Huda Beauty is this whole colorism and plus um, homophobic because homophobic or she doesn't put men in general in her makeup or in her Instagram to put her makeup because there's a lot of men out there that loves makeups too. Not just gay men, there's also straight men that likes makeups too. I like my men, I, like, I love my men wearing makeup. It's a turn on for me. So anyways, um, the problem with Huda Beauty, she doesn't put any men in on her social media platform. She doesn't show women of deeper skin tone, skin tone in her Instagram platform unless they're wearing her foundation and that's about it. And that's just, what? And also, too, I just can't take her Insta videos. I have an issue with Instagram videos, especially when there's the, the, the dumb makeup hacks or Instagram comedy videos. I just can't take them seriously. And she's like one of those people has her accounts. I just can't take her brand seriously for that. And also, she made a comment about bleaching. People should bleach their vagina. That is 
dangerous. Like, bleaching your skin is already dangerous enough. Having a vagina bleach, it is dangerous. So, um... I, I just can't take a person that, like, that serious. Like, like she's the face of the brand. So she's Huda fucking beauty. Huda Katan. She's the face of the brand, and then you're going around promoting that. The last brand, this one broke my heart when I had to officially rip off the band-aid is can't vaccinate damn kids or also known as Nasi Von D, but actually her name is Kat Von D. I cannot support someone that A, has an anti-Semitism past. I know people, I, I understand people don't want to support Jeffree Star because it's racist past. I understand because I'm one of those people. But telling, but saying that you don't want to support Jeffree Star because racist is past, but you support Kat Von D and you're okay with her anti-Semitism and her Nazi past is disgusting. I'm just saying. Because number one, like having your lip product one time, having a Nazi slur that Nazis used is disgusting. And then even though you had a bad relationship with your boss from Miami Inc., writing a photo and saying a slur is disgusting. It is. And I know people don't like her because the Lolita lipstick and the underage red, which I really cringe. Like, that is, like, just don't purchase that product. In a way, like, yes, having people fantasizing minor girls is disgusting enough. But I just cannot stand someone that is racist. And even worse, that they're giving false accusation about vaccines. Vaccines are very needed and important. Like when I read her post about she's having a baby, okay, cool, okay. Wants to have a baby, wants to do a, a home birth, fine. Uh, don't want to see a doctor, but wants to have a doula or a midwife, okay. I still think you see a doctor, but you know, a doula and a midwife, they're also trained medically, so. Um, I don't want to vaccinate my kids because um, vaccines are evil and they're the devil and they're bad and, and fuck doctors. This is a red flag. If you don't like this, then you're, you're welcome to fuck off. Okay, I'm welcome to fuck off because you're someone who looks up to because you're edgy and you're vegan and you're goth. Be honest with you, her makeup brand is not even all that great. It only looks great because of packaging. And it hurts my feelings because you never apologize or address your Naziism past, anti Semitism. It was already worse that you were being a home wrecker with Jesse James. He has some Nazi fetishism and you support that? It's disgusting. I'm sorry, it's fucking disgusting. I just can't support someone like that. And then her husband, he's Mexican and he has swastikas on his neck and they have the Star of David. Like that. I don't even care. You tell me, oh, it's the good swastika, the Buddhism. That swastika got long destroyed when Hitler took it and made it as a hateful symbol. But for you to have it on your neck and it had the Star of David in it, I don't know. I don't support this brand anymore. I still have friends that do support them and they attack me when I say I don't want to, but this is my opinion, it's how I feel, and it's not my place to tell people get over it or this is, oh, it's her child. If she chooses not to vaccinate her child, it's her business. True, but vaccines are something that you're protecting yourself, your child, and the community. And when you bring false accusation like that, you're not safe as a person. And then you get people still following you. Like, I can understand people just like her brand. They don't care about her lifestyle and her life. That is fine, but be aware that people out there don't want to support her because they don't want to put her money for her stupid beliefs. 
respect that. Same as all these other brands with their stupidity or their racist past. Respect those people out there who do not want to put their two cents in them because of these reasons. So anyways, that is my video. I hope I didn't come out way too negative. I'm so sorry, but just being really honest and true. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!